So we have three aim methods for the controller in Overwatch 2, dual zone, exponential ramp, and linear ramp. For this video, I connected the controller to the PC. We monitored the analog stick movement from the DualSense X application to see how much our behavior would affect each aim method. I'm also using this fixed tool to hold analog stick stable in different positions to ensure that all information we provide is tested correctly. If we understand how each of these aiming techniques works, we can find the best one for each hero and ourselves. Plus, we see how sensitivity settings affect them and we will try to find the best sensitivity settings for each aiming method. We are starting with the first one, dual zone. How does dual zone work? As the name explains, dual zone means there are two zones. If we consider this as the entire zone that our analog stick moves through, dual zone will split this into two different parts. For one part, your aim will have the same sensitivity. Regardless of how much you push the stick or how fast you do it, it will have the same sensitivity speed. And for the second zone, we'll have a much faster speed, which can help rotate fast or change to the other side of the screen so quickly. But how big are these? zones, how much will the sensitivity affect them, and how faster the second zone is in comparison to the first zone. Let's find it out. As you can see, analog stick potentiometer goes up to 1016 to 1024 steps on X and 1016 to 1023 on Y axis. So we want to see from 0 to 1024 to see on which number the second zone comes in. So I lock the controller with this tool step by step and going further in X axis with the default sensitivity and found that the second zone, which is the accelerated aiming speed, starts around 930 or minus 930 in each side. The y-axis starts from the same number, 930 or minus 930 in up or down. If we do simple math, 1024 is the maximum potentiometer as 100%. 930 will be 90.82%. So with the default settings, the first zone covers over 90% of your analog stick and the last 10% will be your second zone which does a faster sensitivity but it's not accelerated. From 930 you have a more rapid speed, but if you go to 1024, it doesn't increase it, it's a fixed speed. However, for the first one, we have a little accelerated boost speed. I mean your aim speed still increases a little bit, let's say from 110 to 930. So even though it has the second zone as a fixed speed, the first zone still have some acceleration to the amount of movement. By the way, one crucial option here, we have an option named aim is in. This option changes the whole behavior. It adds adds more dead zone, which I explain what it is now and also adds more acceleration effect for your aim, which means it gets slower for a lower amount of movement. So when we have aim is in on zero, you can see the dead zone is up to 110 of the potentiometer. Until 110, nothing happens. It's a dead zone because you may have a stick drift even with a new controller. So they add this. After 120, it starts moving as you can see how it's moving. Now if we change aim is to 100%, as you can see, the dead zone is much bigger. It will not affect until 225. And even though it starts on 225, it starts slow. That's why they call it is in because it starts slowly even slower than normal mode. And as you push the stick more, it gradually increases the speed to maximum. It's like having a curve like this from 240 to 930. But remember, this option mainly affects the first zone in this mode. The second zone still has similar behavior. As you can see, there isn't much of a difference there. Now, what if we increase sensitivity? Does it affect the zone percentage or the speed of that last 10%? Let's find it out. I increase sensitivity on horizontal to 60 and vertical to 35. With aim is in on zero, it gets faster around 930, which is the last 10% on your stick zone. So changing the sensitivity speed doesn't change the zone area, but it affects the boost speed. I mean because the aim speed is faster, now the second zone is also much faster compared to the default values. Nothing special here. I did a lot more tests, so I'm not gonna waste your time here. But here's the final take on how dual zone works. It splits your analog stick into two different zones, zone 1 and zone 2. In zone 1, the aim acts normal for 90% of the stick. It starts from 120, 
11% of the entire zone and goes up to 930 which is 90% of the whole zone. It also has a slight acceleration boost on higher movement which means your aim will be slower on 200 compared to 300 as you can see here and more until 930. So it's not a fixed speed as some people may misunderstand that. I was who made this mistake in the last video. So as I promised I will no longer make videos unless they are based on facts. That's why I made this video. Anyway, if you add aim is in 100% it will add a higher dead zone. Dead zone means a part of the zone that doesn't affect the game, increasing that to 240. So dead zone is now 23% of your stick if you go to maximum and also adds an easier curve for the stick. An easier curve means your aim is now slower on a lower amount of pushing and you can use this option if you have stick drift issues where you don't touch the stick but it moves on its own. But I prefer keeping it off and if you want to know why check this video up here the link is also down below, you can check it later. So now you know how dual zone works. And when you want to play with this aim technique, you know if you need to move the aim fast or rotate fast, you have to push it all the way. And also you know that it's not a fixed aim speed in the first zone, but it gets slower or faster a little depending on how you push it. But wait, we still have two more methods to test. And after that, you can choose which one is the best for you. And I will show you the best advanced settings for each aim method how does exponential ramp work i don't know what this word means precisely and even oxford wasn't enough to find out for me but it explains here anyways if you know what this word means let me know in the comments below my english isn't so good thanks so in expansional ramp with the default settings we have a higher dead zone around 180 from 180 to 250 it moves slowly as you can see and it has the same behavior until 1024 which means exponential ramp actually is similar to many other games and old school aiming technique it doesn't have acceleration on a higher amount it just gets faster as you push it more and suppose you are wondering that i was wrong in the last video yes again in that case it doesn't matter if you push it fast or slow it acts the same in each step so it has some behavior in this picture if you go to the max in one second it still has same speed as going to maximum in 0.1 seconds what i mean here it has some known zones and it gradually increases the aim speed in each zone regardless of how you threat it and no boost at the end of the stick suppose we add aim is in into the exponential round technique in that case dead zone again increases up to 310 and we have an accelerated speed because of the same curve and lower amounts of movement are now slower however it doesn't mean higher amounts are faster it just eases in and affects the start so now you know how exponential ramp works and when you want to play with this aim technique you know that there are specific zones that each one increases the speed gradually and if you treat it faster or go to the last part of your stick it doesn't matter it will have the same behavior and don't worry about aim smoothing we get into that right now what you thought i was gonna say later let's get into it now so how does aim smoothing work it can be helpful in some points but useless in some other matters what aim smoothing do is to make delay to response your aim movement are you looking for a delay probably not it works the same on all aim techniques when you have it on 100 if you constantly change your aim it takes some time until it affects your game this time is in milliseconds but it can be so effective look at the analog stick and the aim behavior when i change it from left to right and reverse and now if we go to the settings and change it to zero percent look how responsive the aim is it's like you removed all that delay which you did but which one can be better having it on zero percent or 10 20 50 100 we'll get into that after the last technique which is linear ramp after that i'll show you recommended advanced settings for each how does linear ramp work as the name explains there is a linear effect on how it works so with the default settings the dead zone is around 100 it has the least dead zone among all of the aiming techniques remember most aiming techniques had a curve like this they would mostly change the speed in each zone more or less gradually however the linear your ramp isn't like that it mainly changes the speed in each zone like a jump 
Of course, not exactly like that, but it's more harsh. Like you suddenly feel from 300 to 400, aim speed changes a little, then in 550, it goes faster quickly. And this is how a linear ramp works precisely. And there is also no boost at the end, like a dual zone, no multiplier. Now if we change aim is in 100%, dead zone increases to about 230, and the aim becomes smoother and easier to control for the lower amounts. However, 100% isn't my choice. Let's go to the next section where I give you all my recommended settings. So now you know how linear ramp works, and when you want to play with this aiming method, you know that it has the least dead zone. If you have a stick there issue you must increase aim is a little and also it acts like the jump from one speed to another not absolutely but primarily and there is no boost in any case it doesn't matter how you treat it if you push it fast or slow it still has the same speed in each zone which aiming method is the best it's pretty hard to say for everyone when you know how they work you can try them while understanding how they work and see which one fits your style the most but one short thing for me if you want my opinion never play with linear ramp that's my opinion don't swear at me in the comments but which sensitivity settings are the best it depends on the hero you play with, your chosen aim, and your play style. In general, I'm gonna show you my recommended settings for all three techniques, but if you want me to make a video for the best aiming techniques and settings for each hero, tell me in the comments so I will do it because it needs a lot of tests. For what you are about to see is just my recommendation. I would never say it's the best for everyone. It's the best for me, but you can give it a chance. Best sensitivity and advanced settings for dual zone in Daniel's opinion. If you choose dual zone the default in this game, I recommend horizontal sensitivity at 38% and vertical at 26%. You can hold X on the controller to change the numbers one by one instead of 10%. In advanced settings, I recommend aim smoothing on 100% for dual zone. We have two zones on dual zone. If you make smoothing lower and push the stick a little bit faster, it ruins your aim consistently and you really don't want that keep aim is in on zero percent best sensitivity and advanced settings for exponential ramp in daniel's opinion exponential is my choice of aiming in overwatch 2 depending on the hero i choose exponential or dual zone but mostly this one if you choose exponential ramp i recommend horizontal at 28 percent vertical at 16 percent aim smoothing at 80 percent and aim is at 5%. I love revolver and these settings are mostly considered for this weapon. Best sensitivity and advanced settings for linear ramp in Daniel's opinion. However, I don't recommend linear ramp, but if you choose it, I recommend horizontal at 32%, vertical at 20%, aim smoothing at 50%, and aim is at 10%. You can try all three techniques with the methods I showed you and maybe you will find linear better than dual zone as I do in some cases. If in any case you think your aim is fast or slow only change sensitivity and try again. But I don't recommend changing advanced settings in my opinion. The options that I gave you there can be good in most situations. Reticle settings. It's a lot personal. I prefer green color, crosshairs, an opacity of 70%, an outline opacity of 20%, and a dot opacity of 75%. Best aiming settings for each hero. If you want me to make a dedicated video for each hero and the best settings with proof and test, let me know in the comments. And also check this video next where I showed you the best PS5 settings for Overwatch 2, like audio, video, etc. It's not here yet, but soon it will be. I'll see you there.